in the spring of 1757. I arrived in England when I was near 12 years of age. Almost 30 years later, when I had purchased my freedom from slavery, I went in search of a man whom I believed held the key to abolishing slavery. His name was Granville Sharp. What brings you to England, Mr. Bassett? I was hoping to employ your intervention in the human traffic of African slaves. You have views on the matter? Yes, sir. Have you kept any memoirs of your experiences on the plantations? How will this help you in the slave trade? Words are spears, Mr. Vassa. Once you have mastered the English language, you have the sharpest blade. If we are to end the slave trade, then it will be by the pen. Are you a religious man, Mr. Vassar? No, sir. I've written a few books myself on Christianity. But if there's one book I'd recommend, it's the Holy Scriptures. Cherish it well, Mr. Vassar. For in it, you will find the key to your life. Desperately hunting for and haunted by the God creation, I delved into the Holy Scriptures to consider my eternal state. I feasted upon his word, chewing it like manna to a hungry man, sweeter than honey on my tongue. There is neither a Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ. The forcefulness of these words penetrated my mind. I felt like I was reborn in my mother's womb. All the joy and happiness of a God-filled life began to flow through my heart, cleansing my spirit, renewing my soul. I started to reflect on my life with spiritual eyes, observing Christ dancing with me through the rhythm of bondage, sharing my pain, alleviating my suffering. This was the breakthrough I was searching for to energize my protest against slavery. The match was now ignited. I was going to capture the imagination of Britain. The ancient Greeks had slaves. The Roman Empire had slaves. The Saracens had slaves, including your very own from Cornwall. Even in Russia, slavery still continues in the form of serfdom. But the greatest of all these evils is the trafficking of the African species. To abolish the slave trade means to cut off the supply of slaves from Africa. That will result in either the slave population dying off or plantation owners forced to pay salaries to their slaves. Either way, it is a step closer to freedom. We must be agitators for a humanitarian cause. Already we have formed an alliance with the MP William Wilberforce to champion our cause in the House of Commons. Today, gentlemen of Britain, we can make history and change the world for good. We can take a stand against this human injustice of which I am a witness. We can refuse to take the slave-grown sugar in our tea to refrain from drinking coffee made from the harsh conditions of slaves in the Americas. And we can resist the habit of smoking tobacco. I appeal to you to join the campaign for the effecting of the abolition of the slave trade and put an end to this human evil once and for all. Congratulations, Mr. Vassar. We're fully behind you in your campaign to abolish the slave trade, and all of us have stopped taking sugar in our tea. My name's James Cullen. May I present to you my daughter, Susanna? Ah, so you're the young lady who subscribed to my book. It must be very exciting travelling across the country, meeting lots of different people. Travelling can be very lonely if you've got no one to share it with. I think you need the aid of some women in your campaign, Mr. Vassar. Hmm. 
Do you think women can end the slave trade? There have been 519 petitions in favour of abolition submitted to Parliament. You can be sure that a large proportion of them were either from women or influenced by women. Maybe you should join me in my campaign. Are you an Anglican, Mr. Vesser? No, I'm a Wesleyan. Aha, uh -huh. the methods of John Wesley. Have you met Reverend Wesley, Mr. Vesser? No, Mrs. Cullen. But he has subscribed to my book, as has Josiah Wedgwood. We would be delighted to see you again, Mr. Vesser. You may consider this your home. So many beautiful women here in England, Gustavus. You must find yourself a wife before it's too late. Two worlds come together when a man and woman gets married. Two histories are intimately engaged when they become one flesh. The marriage of Britain to Africa was embodied in my wedding to Susanna on the 7th of April. 1792. The freed slave who built the empire and the beneficiary of slavery began to integrate their lives together. Susanna, I have to travel to Stockton at the weekend. They want some copies of my book. But of course, your book always comes first. Dearest, our prayers have been answered. What is it? An abolition bill to end the slave trade in 1796 has been voted in Parliament by 230 in favour to 85 against. This means the battle is over. Our campaigning has been successful. There's no need for me to travel around the country and be away from you for so long. I can now devote myself to your happiness. I have you all to myself at last. We should celebrate. What did you have in mind? the father who provided for me, to the God who created me, to the husband who loves me, Gustavus! Forgive me for being absent from you for these past few months. Gustavus, you've got to be gentle with me. I'm pregnant. What? I'm going to have our baby. I'm going to have a son? You might be a daughter. Yes. <coughs> Say hello to your new daughter. Joanna Vesper. You take her. She has your eyes and your nose. For eight and a half months she kept me company. She was you in your absence. Now at your back. She's your baby.
Mr. Sharp is here, Gustavus. Ah. My dear Gustavus. Greetings, Granville. Can we get you something to drink? No. No, I'm not planning on staying long. Your God has been good to me. He's blessed Susanna and I with our daughter. Gustavus, prepare your heart for evil tidings. What is it? The motion for an abolition bill in 1796 has been rejected in the House of Lords. Then we'll ask Mr. Wilberforce to push for the following year. But do you also know that our addresses have been published in newspapers and that death threats have been received from pro-slavery campaigners who say that we have an affinity with the revolution in France and Saint-Domingue? What? We have no hope in passing an abolition bill. But the people have pledged their support for the cause. They've asked for another print run of my book. Your books are now being burnt as we speak. Your association with the London Corresponding Society has not made you popular with Parliament. I'm afraid that this is a war we cannot win. You mean there's no hope at all? I'm sorry, Gustavus. Maybe we're not the ones to end the slave trade. Bye, Mrs. Vassa. There will be a day when slavery will come to an end. Could we have won Gustavus? Could we ever have ended the slave trade? By trying, we achieved something. A time will come when this country will stand up and listen to the voices of slaves. Will we live to see that day, Gustavus? Susanna, for you and me there can be no goodbyes. As long as our daughter lives, we both live. I'm afraid Susanna's mental breakdown has worsened. The doctor's only given her a few weeks. Is there anything we can do? We can only pray for her. I've been doing nothing but praying these past few months. What do you pray for? I pray that your Anna may live to see the end of slavery. Look after my daughter, Anne. If Susanna and I don't live to see the end of slavery, tell her how we try to abolish it in our campaign. Tell her what we dreamed of as a family. Tell her that above everything else, that we loved her. You'll be remembered, Father. You'll be remembered for all the work you've done. Because I'll tell everyone. 
I'll tell him who you were and what you did so that we could be free today. Goodbye, my father. I'll see you and Mama again in the life to come. <laughs>